Clinical Chemistry, Blood Gases The measurement of the pH PCO2 and PO2 for the assessment of oxygenation status, or the acid-base balance. So pH we already discussed. We talked about um, it's an index of the acidity or alkalinity of the blood, and the normal reference range is 7.35 to 7.45. The PCO2, or the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, is the measure of tension or pressure of carbon dioxide dissolved in red blood cells. It's the respiratory component of the acid-base balance, and it represents the balance between cellular production and ventilatory removal of carbon dioxide. Normal range is 35 to 45 millimeters mercury. The partial pressure of oxygen, or PO2, is the measurement of of tension or pressure of oxygen dissolved in the blood, and it's related to the ability of the lungs to oxygenate blood from the alveolar air. Conditions for adequate tissue oxygenization, available atmospheric oxygen, adequate ventilation, gas exchange between the lungs and arterial blood, the loading of oxygen into hemoglobin, adequate hemoglobin, adequate transport, so cardiac output, and release of oxygen to the tissues. Causes of decreased PO2, decreased pulmonary ventilation, such as an airway obstruction, pulmonary failure, brain trauma, impaired gas exchange between the alveolar air and the pulmonary capillary blood, so bronchitis, emphysema, pulmonary edema, altered blood flow within the heart or lungs, congenital defects in the heart, shunting of venous blood into arterial system without oxygenation in the lungs. The assessment of oxygen status, oxygen saturation, or the SO2, measured fractional percent of oxygen oxyhemoglobin, trends in oxygen saturation, assessed by a pulse oximetry, and partial pressure of oxygen. So oxygen saturation, the equation is given here, it's an indirect method for determining the partial pressure of oxygen. It can be determined directly on arterial mixed venous samples or venous blood samples. Some blood gas instruments can calculate PO2, pH, and temperature, can vary significantly from actual measurements due to differences in algorithms. Calculated values should not be used to assess oxygenated status. The fractional percent of oxygenated hemoglobin, numerically similar to the oxygen saturation in healthy individuals, will deviate in smokers or carbon monoxide poisoning. Low fractional percent of oxygenated hemoglobin indicates either low arterial uh, partial pressure of oxygen or impaired ability of hemoglobin to bind oxygen. Decreased partial pressure of oxygen indicates reduced ability of oxygen to diffuse from the alveolar air into the blood because hypoventilation increased venal arterial shunting or both. It can occur as a consequence of anemia, poisoning with other hemoglobin substances, carboxyhemoglobin, methemoglobin, sulfhemoglobin, cyanomethemoglobin. Distinguishing between arterial hypoxia and cyanosis is important. So hypoxia, you're going to see a decrease in PO2 and SO2 or um, FO2HB. In cyanosis, it's typically just a a decrease in FO2HB. Oxygen and carbon dioxide, common factors influencing the amount of oxygen that moves through the alveoli into the blood and then into the tissue, includes destruction of alveoli, pulmonary edema, airway blockage, inadequate blood supply, or the diffusion of carbon dioxide and oxygen. Most oxygen in arterial blood is transported to the tissues by hemoglobin. Blood hemoglobin exists in one of four conditions. Oxyhemoglobin is when oxygen is reversibly bound to hemoglobin. Deoxyhemoglobin is when hemoglobin is not bound to oxygen, but capable of forming a bond when oxygen is available. It's also known as reduced hemoglobin. Carboxyhemoglobin Hemoglobin is uh, bound to carbon monoxide. Methemoglobin. Hemoglobin is unable to bind oxygen because iron is in in an oxidized rather than a reduced state. Oxygen and gas exchange. The quantities associated with assessing a patient's oxygen status. Oxygen saturation, or SO2, is the ratio of oxygen that's bound to carrier protein hemoglobin compared with the normal, uh, with total amount of hemoglobin capable of binding to oxygen. Fractional oxyhemoglobin is the ratio of concentration 
of hemoglobin to concentration of total hemoglobin. So oxyhemoglobin to total hemoglobin. Trends in oxygen, oxygen saturation are assessed by transcutaneous pulse oximetry. Oxygen content, the total oxygen in the blood, or the sum of the oxygen bound to hemoglobin and the amount of dissolved in plasma, PO2. Hemoglobin oxygen dissociation. Oxygen must be released at the tissues from its carrier hemoglobin. Oxygen dissociates from adult A1 hemoglobin in a characteristic fashion or an S-shaped curve. The shape of oxygen dissociation curve and the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen are affected by the hydrogen ion activity, so the pH, PCO2 and CO levels, body temperature, and 2,3 dpg. So this is that S-shaped curve that was mentioned. So here we can see the curve, um, and we're talking about the partial pressure of oxygen, um, or oxygen tension, and then the oxygen hemoglobin saturation. So when we look at this diagram, we see our normal S-shaped curve here. And then if we're talking about increasing the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen, this means that hemoglobin wants to hang on to oxygen, or it wants to bind to oxygen. So the factors that cause an increase in oxygen affinity would be an increase in pH. So where do we have a higher pH? At the lungs, because we are blowing off that carbon dioxide, so we're going to have a higher pH in that area. Um, and at the lungs, we're going to want to have an increase in affinity for oxygen, because we're blowing off the carbon dioxide, but we're trying to gather the oxygen from the environment. We have an increase in oxygen affinity, um, a decrease in DPG, a decrease in oxygen release, or a decrease in temperature. So if we have a colder temperature, again, we have colder temperatures in the lungs, that's going to increase the affinity for hemoglobin for oxygen. So high fetal hemoglobin also has a higher oxygen affinity. The baby is going to want to take the oxygen from the mom. The mom is going to have a lower um, affinity, so the mom's hemoglobin is going to willingly give up that um, oxygen to the baby's uh, hemoglobin. Modified hemoglobin, um, we talked about those previously, and then 2,3 BPG depleted blood, um, all going to cause an increase in oxygen affinity. So then if we see this curve here, now we're talking about a decrease in the affinity of oxygen. So when we're in the lungs, we want hemoglobin to grab onto oxygen and hang on to it. But when we get to the tissues, we want it to be able to let go. So we're going to have a decrease in affinity for oxygen at the tissues. At the tissues, we also notice we have a decrease in pH. Our cells are going through all sorts of metabolic processes, and they're giving off carbon dioxide as a waste, and that's um, going to produce an acidic environment. So we have a decrease in pH, and that's going to decrease the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. We have decreased affinity for oxygen, so we have an increase in DPG, increase in oxygen release, and an increased temperature. So there's also a higher temperature in the tissues than there is at the lungs. We have a decreased oxygen affinity um, when we see various types of hypoxia with severe anemia, heart and lung disease, or at high altitudes. The Bohr effect. The Bohr effect is an important in the mechanism of oxygen transport and acid-base balance. It has, uh, has to do with the affinity for oxygen increases as the pH increases. The binding of oxygen in the lungs. So um, this is what I just talked about, but that has to do with the Bohr effect. The affinity for oxygen decreases as the pH decreases, and that causes the re release of oxygen in the tissues. Blood gas analysis, so pH, PCO2, and PO2 can be measured by ion-specific electrodes. A pH probe is pH-sensitive glass. PCO2, a modified pH probe, is permeable to CO2. PO2, a platinum wire at constant reducing potential, semi-permeable membrane specific for oxygen. Oxygen saturation is measured or calculated, actual percent of oxyhemoglobin by coximetry. Calculated parameters, bicarbonate, oxygen content, and um, FO2HB.
Spectrophotometric determination of oxygen saturation. The actual percent of oxyhemoglobin can be determined using a quaximeter designed to measure various hemoglobin species. Each species has a characteristic absorbance curve. The number of wavelengths incorporated into the instrument determines the number of species that can be measured, from four to hundreds. Four is the most common hemoglobin species. Potential sources of error, faulty instrument calibration, and um, spectral interfering substances. There are blood gas analyzers. Blood gas analyzers measure pH, PCO2, and PO2 with electrodes. Amperometric, amount of current flow indicates oxygen present. Potentiometric, the change in voltage indicates analyte activity, so PCO2 or pH. A cathode, so there's a negative electrode, the site to which cat cations tend to travel, and the site to which uh, reduction occurs. An anode, there's a positive electrode, a site which anions tend to travel, and a site at which oxidation occurs. Electrochemical cell, formed when two opposite electrodes are immersed in a liquid that will conduct current. Measurement of PO2. PO2, or Clark electrodes, measure the amount of current flow in circuit related to the amount of oxygen being reduced at the cathode. Sources of error include the buildup of protein material on the surface of the membrane, bacterial contamination within the measuring chamber. Continuous measures, measurements for PO2 are possible using transcutaneous electrodes placed directly on the skin. The measurement of pH and PCO2, ion force measurement requires two electrodes and a voltmeter. Uh, potential differences is related to concentration of ions of interest and Nernst equation. Types of electrochemical sensors. Macroelectrode sensors are used in blood gas instruments since beginning of clinical measurement of blood gases. Microelectrodes are miniaturized macroelectrodes. There's thick and thin film technology. Sensors are tiny wires embedded in printed circuit card that are disposable. Optical sensors use fluorescent dyes to, into which sample diffuses. They have been applied to indwelling blood gas systems. Calibration. pH and blood gas measurements are extremely sensitive to temperature. Electrode sample chamber must be maintained at a constant temperature. pH electrode is calibrated with two buffer solutions, traceable to standards prepared by NIST. Two gas mixtures are used to calibrate for PCO2 and PO2. Most instruments are self-calibrating and are programmed to indicate a calibration error if the electronic single signal from the electrode is inconsistent with programmed expected value. Calculated parameters, so bicarbonate is based on the Henderson-Hasselbeck equation and can be calculated when pH and PCO2 are known. Carbonic acid concentration can be calculated using the solubility coefficient of carbon dioxide in plasma at 37 degrees Celsius, which is body temperature. Total carbon dioxide content, bicarbonate plus dissolved carbon dioxide plus associated carbon dioxide with proteins. Correction for temperature, by convention, pH, PCO2, and PO2 are all measured at 37 degrees Celsius. If a patient's body temperature differs from 37 degrees Celsius, blood gas instrument can correct values. Results at 37 should be reported too, however, for reference. Quality assurance, so pre-analytical or analytic considerations, proper patient identification, correct labeling of the specimen and accurate information provided, experienced knowledgeable personnel, proper collection and handling of blood gas specimens, transport time, analytical analytic assessments, QC and proficiency testing, surrogate liquid control materials, tonometry, duplicate assays, non-surrogate QC, interpretation of results. Sources of error, the collection device, usually a syringe, form and concentration of heparin used for anticoagulation, the speed of the syringe filling, Maintenance of the anaerobic environment, introduction of air bubbles during the collection, and the removal of air bubbles after collection. Mixing of the sample to ensure dissolution and distribution of the heparin and transport and storage time before analysis. Quality control assesses the process in three components of analytical phase, pre-analytic, analytic, and post-analytic. Surrogate liquid control materials are the basis of most traditional laboratory QC practices. Usually these are solid sealed glass containers with solutions equilibrated um, with gases of known concentration. 
Duplicate assays using two or more instruments for simultaneous analysis of patient samples is another quality control approach. Participating in external interlaboratory surveys or proficiency testing programs is another essential component of ensuring the quality of blood gas instruments. If you are unfamiliar with blood gases and you would like a review, I did post a couple supplementary videos that I'd like you to take a look at so that you can review um, the oxyhemoglobin saturation curve and um, blood gas measures and the physiology related to um, that type of stuff. So go ahead and take a look at those supplementary videos.